All right, we're back with uh, part two of the uh, large cabinet cigar humidor. Um, this is uh, me lifting this monster up and uh, I just drew a line at three eighths of an inch so I can drill some holes for some screws just for extra uh, added support. And like I mentioned in the first video, this thing is so large that I'm having to be strategic with how I build this thing. So since I flipped it up, now I can go ahead and put these uh, back pieces of trim on to help cover up the, uh, the plies of the plywood. And here I'm, um, as you've seen in the first humidor I made, uh, the single cabinet humidor, uh, you can see how I resawed the uh, Spanish cedar and taped it up into these sheets and glued them. And so you can go back and watch that video in my first humidor series. And since there's really no way to clamp this, I'm having to use some heavy objects to help um, hold this down flat so the glue can cure. And once again, kind of doing this in stages. So while that's uh, curing, I'm doing the trim on the side of the humidor. And just throwing a few pin nails in there just to, for added um, security once again. And being the there again, the way I had to clamp this, I was using some calls to help apply pressure across it just to make sure I was getting it down uh, nice and solid. And I'm still continuing on with the trim on the side. And I'm cutting these down um, rough length. Uh, this is going to be um, still part of the uh, back trim. I'm just cutting them down using my miter saw here, cutting them down to size. And taking it over there and instead of measuring, I'm just going to use uh, the wood itself to get my measurement. Um, sometimes that's just a little more easier to do than trying to get an exact measurement. Same thing here, used my pencil to mark it, went back, cut it, and just gluing those on there. Then we're gonna clamp it up. And that's gonna, after I do the other side, that's gonna be all I do for the back. All I was looking to do was just cover up the plies. Um, and my client, he uh, is going to put some electrical sockets in here. So um, there's going to be two humidifiers, uh, one on this uh, side right here and then one on the other side. So I am just cutting this out, drilling a little pilot hole, using a forcing a bit to go almost all the way through and then come back from the back. To This way there's no tear out on the back. And as you can see, I've already got one of the plugs in. And go almost all the way through and then go to the back again. Helps with not being any tear out. And then I use a little saw here to get as much of the access off as I could. And finish it off, cleaning it up with the chisel. And I'm only going about halfway through and then I go around to the back and start chiseling from that side once again trying to avoid tear out. And it slides right on in just like this. 
and I made those pieces of um, Spanish cedar the veneer it's a little bit too big so I'm just using my plane here to plane it down flush and um, I did this a couple different ways in, in another piece of this video you'll see where I'm just using a, um, a straight knife to get it down and then I just sand it flush and here we are again um, applying some of these this glue to this veneer and I'm, like I said I'm having to do this in stages because of the size of this humidor and so I'm basically making some calls there to help apply pressure all the way across And once I get that on there, I'm going to um, apply some cross braces here just to try to push it in just a little bit more. Just trying to make sure I'm, I got even pressure all the way across, like I said. Um, and here's what I was talking about earlier. I'm using a straight knife here to cut the excess Spanish cedar veneer off. And I do this and then, like I said, take the sander and sand it flush. Should have changed the razor blade out. That was a dull razor blade. And there it goes. It's basically flush. And now I'm making the um, trim for the top. And I did three layers two layers is going to be a cove such as that one and then one layer is going to be a large round over and here i am gluing these layers up and I'm going to use a, um, a brass spacer, it's one eighth of an inch, and this way it's going to help me be consistent across there. Um, I'll use the pin neller to kind of put them in place till I can come back and put the clamps on there. And once this glue is dry, then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do the third layer, which is the round over. And you'll see that in just a moment. And once again, just for ad security, I'm just going back and pin nailing some more in there once it's been clamped up. And now I'm changing out the router to uh, taking the cove bit off and putting that round over on. And you'll see in a moment, I'll be making that round over for that top piece of trim for the third layer. And once again, I'm going to be using that brass 1 8 inch spacer and uh, using it to give me the consistent space so I can pin it and then clamp it up. And here we go with 10,000 clamps once again.
and now that it's all dried up and cured up using a miter saw to cut the uh, the miters got one side cut and now I'm measuring for one for where I need to cut the other miter and I didn't do an exact measurement there I'm just gonna sneak up on it um, because when you're doing these type of miter cuts here it's got to be exact and once I got it up there I uh, clamped it up in place and I'm just using a hole punch here so I can put some pilot holes in And all I did putting those pilot holes there was really just because I had it spaced exactly where I wanted it. And so this way, since I added the glue, I can come back and make sure I put that, tr that trim exactly where I did have it. And uh, so now I'm gonna, I glued it and now I'm gonna screw it after I put these clamps on. And once again, I came back with uh, some brad nails on this one right here. And I already did the other side and now I'm doing the last side. Putting the glue on. And I'm gonna brad nail this in place so I can drill some holes for the screws. And you can see I'm using the blue tape there so I don't drill too far in. the saw here to cut the feet um, this is a piece of doo -doo -doo, I believe um, six quarter I believe inch and a half something like that and um, I'm putting a cove on one side and doing a round over on the other side just to kind of go with the theme of the uh, top trim Now I'm doing a round over on the bottom. And now I'm going to glue them and screw them. Using the brad nailer just to kind of keep it in place while I do this. And I've got some uh, leveling feet ordered and uh, they were supposed to have came already, but they haven't. So I'm gonna come back and uh, I'll probably get it on the next video of putting those leveling feet in. And this is the end of uh, part two. Um, hope y'all stick around and watch part three coming out probably in a couple weeks or so. Um, it's looking really good. Um, Thanks again.